Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. It's a nice, easy Monday in this nice, easy time of year. Thanks be to God. As we do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Good times. <clears throat> It's a beautiful day here today, hopefully a little bit cooler than it was yesterday, which is very nice. Yeah, that's it. Great. Well, let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, during these years there shall be no dew or rain except at my word. The Lord then said to Elijah, Leave here, go east, and hide in the Wadi Cherith, east of the Jordan. You shall drink of the stream, and I have commanded ravens to feed you there. So he left and did as the Lord commanded. He went and remained by the Wadi Cherith, east of the Jordan. Ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eyes towards the mountains. Whence shall help come to me? My help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. May he not suffer your foot to slip. May he slumber not with who guard you. Indeed, he neither slumbers nor sleeps, the guardian of Israel. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord is your guardian. The Lord is your shade. He is beside you at your right hand. The sun shall not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard your coming and your going, both now and forever. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. 
Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This week, we get to read this wonderful story about Elijah. We're skipping some of the more interesting and weird details uh, sometimes we forget about. Like, for example, so on Wednesday, we get to that you know very famous moment when he calls down fire from heaven as opposed to the Baal people who can do nothing and the sacrifice is taken. You know, that, that very you know, big image. But we're not reading what happened exactly after that, which is when Elijah went and massacred all the prophets of Baal. <clears throat> Blessed are the peacemakers. Anyway, so the, that the story of Elijah is, is very full of very interesting and weird details that we sometimes skip over, but I do recommend them. They're interesting, especially if you're interested in kind of like going into that in-depth kind of thing, not just because like, honestly, they should be commented on because there's very interesting significance, but there's some other bits and pieces that we don't necessarily always think about. Like for example, with Elijah and Elisha, there's lots of continuity and things going on. And there's some similarities in the stories and some differences in the stories of these two. And of course, Elisha, I'm going to say Elisha is the student of Elijah. And frankly, their names are the same anyway. So go figure. But among them, also, there, there are a lot of interesting details, which are very much worth investigating and spending some time with. Like, for example, that time when to raise a child from the dead, the prophet lays on top of them, of, of the corpse, and prays to God. And, and this is a very interesting, and it, it makes this point, though, that the hands are extended out. And makes this very interesting reference, then, to, frankly, the crucifixion of our Lord and the power of the cross and all of these things, which it's an awkward story for sure, but also within that perspective of the Christian gospel makes a lot of sense. So there's going to be a lot of those things. But as Jesus says, thus did they behave with the prophets who came before you in doing all kinds of evil things against you. We hear the Sermon on the Mount many times, frequently. This gospel is used for a lot of things. It's kind of one of the most popular gospels for weddings and for funerals. It's about as ubiquitous as weddings as the Ave Maria. And it's always, you know, there in the teaching of the church. After all, it is only just the Sermon on the Mount, kind of this very important moment, especially at the beginning, the Beatitudes that we hear so frequently. I want to talk about the Beatitudes today. Because I want to, like, there, there's never too much to say about the Beatitudes. And it's fun to kind of take them individually and go through them. Like, for example, Blessed are the Meek is a very, very intriguing Beatitude by itself. But also, if we take the Beatitudes as habits, that's an interesting way of thinking about them, too. Last week was the priest retreat for the priests of our diocese. And one of our priests said that in his parish, they do their best to live the Beatitudes, which is not an uncommon thing to hear, either from the pulpit or from the priest talking about how the church is structured or from, frankly, any Christian church of any kind saying like, this is what we're about. We are about the Beatitudes because it also makes for a very good mission statement. We are doing these things. We are trying to be 
peacemakers. We are trying to be actually healthy and therefore poor in spirit, as the Lord says, and all of these other things. Not the mourning part. The, the blessed are those who mourn. That's kind of unfortunate, but it's also a reality of life. But still, it's a great way to kind of focus the mission of how the church should be of any kind of Christian church. These and also like the works of mercy, corporal and spiritual, they, they kind of go very well in operationalizing what the Christian life is about. But it's also a little bit ironic because even though we might strive for this kind of blessedness that the Lord says has this recompense for each one of these things, because each one of them is responded with, because they're going to get something good. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the land. Okay. It's an interesting statement, first of all, just the way the Lord makes it. Blessed are those who are presently, because they will receive. The present goes to this future thing. In reality, all of us are rather imperfect in doing the present part. And so it's not particularly useful to us to think about with this imperfection, well, what what, what we see for the imperfect kind of thing. Of, well, no, that's not how the Beatitudes work. That's clearly not what the Lord is saying. And here's the interesting test that I would like to propose today. The Beatitudes don't really go by degree. So a lot of things in our moral life and the way in which we live our lives, we are trying to do things, especially like with virtues, we are hopefully tending toward them, but very seldom do we have them perfectly. We don't have them just set. So there's no kind of like, how poor in spirit am I today? <laughs> That's kind of, an, uh, doesn't make any sense as a question. Just how much am I doing meekness? today. Just how much are we thirsting for righteousness? A little bit or a lot? And if we're doing at least a little bit, are we like achieving righteousness even? Well, like even that one is kind of, well, these things don't really work by the toward part of the Christian life. Because frankly, many things of our Christian life are hopeful. We are tending to, hopefully, we are trying to be virtuous. We are attempting this. It's not exactly easy, and very, very seldom do we have any one of these things to say more than that, like really well set and perfect. And to put it to another perspective, someone who is poor in spirit is not thinking, am I poor in spirit? That's, that's not what they're, that's not the rubric by which they're measuring their conversion or reflecting on it or hoping for it. If anything, they are. And so are kind of living that blessedness now. That blessed are the poor in spirit suddenly I think makes a bit more sense. And they're also not thinking about the reward that they'll get. They're not doing it because Jesus says, therefore, you will be either in or over or like with the kingdom of heaven. The way in which we approach conversion as Christians is as a constant thing, as an ongoing thing, as something which is certainly at certain points more visible and we have rituals that go along with them. But conversion is our whole life. So much so that really the point is not so much to think about the Beatitudes as a rubric for grading, but rather as things which will be kind of there consistently in the person who has really received the gospel. So we hear this gospel over and over and over again. The Sermon on the Mount in general, the gospel of the Beatitudes in particular, and not just every year, but also at these events in our lives, which are also kind of important. So much so that it's kind of easy to kind of forget. Um, or, or if we do try to analyze it real fast, we might make this mistake that it's somehow these are the 
virtues that we need to go toward. We can't choose really to be meek today or choose to thirst for righteousness this week. If anything, the meekness, that desire for righteousness are what form our choices, not things that we choose. It's a bit more foundational. And that's the, where the gospel should come into our lives. It takes a long time. And certainly is very difficult to see any kind of like crystallized, perfect version of any of these things which might be virtues. It's a little bit ironic when churches will say that we live the Beatitudes. Well, we try, sure, but that's just kind of as the result of so many other things. Individually, we receive the gospel in a variety of ways. And it's a good thing that we do over and over and over again. Even though a gospel like this is so present, by no means does it simply satisfy with one telling everything that we can get out of it or from it. The gospel is in itself an invitation to this closer union with God. And ultimately, it's this closer union with God, which is really the fulfillment of all of these rewards that Jesus is promising to those who are poor in spirit, meek, thirsting for righteousness, or merciful, or clean of heart, or peacemakers. It's not just these those individual gifts. After all, someone does not get the kingdom of heaven and have to want to also inherit the land, but rather all of these things together which are different ways of looking at what union with God is. As we go through our lives and continue in this conversion, it's um, there are things that we should keep our eyes fixed on. Ultimately, it is God. It is not trying to be better peacemakers or more merciful. Those things too, but they come as a result of this other, more important goal which is also quite the reward in itself, to be with God. Cool. That's what I wanted to say about that today. All right. As we do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar and for all bishops, that they may continue to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the church, that we may grow in devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may all continue to grow in contemplative prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that we may always strive to heal from division and strive for greater unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for whom and what else shall we pray? Linda, for Michelle, who's in an emergency this morning, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant that all that works for our good, through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Great. Good times. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. 
Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother to church. With the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Great, good times. Everyone have a lovely Monday, and we'll see you again tomorrow. All right, God bless you all. Bye-bye.